Hey now, Brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Today we're going to take a look at Nia from Blue Orange Games, or Nia, one way or the other, probably Nia. Uh, this is an abstract game where, well, supposedly the theme is supposed to be that you are uh, different uh, feudal families in, uh, in feudal Japan, but really it is just an abstract game. Try not to think about the theme too much. You are putting out tokens onto different tiles. You'll, you'll actually make the board out of these different tiles, and then put your uh, clan tokens down onto where these tiles would go and replace those tiles and then where you uh, your opponent can place his next token is dependent on the token that was on the uh, tile that was picked up. If that sounds a little bit confusing, it's actually very, very simple. Let's go ahead and take a very brief look at how the game is played. Then we're going to come back and I'll let you know what I think. All right, so this is a typical setup for Nia. Each player is going to have a stack of eight tokens. It has the logo on the back and then uh, characters' faces on them, although that's kind of irrelevant to the game. They're purely for decoration. So you'll have your stack of tokens, and then you're gonna have a randomized uh, layout of a four by four grid of these tiles. The tiles are the same on both sides, but you'll shuffle them up, you'll put them out in random order, each time that you play the game. And the important thing about the tiles are that each of them has two different elements to them. So for instance, this one has the sun and a uh, sort of cherry blossom tree, whereas this one has falling leaves and a bird. But then there's a tile that has a bird and a cactus plant. So there's these uh, limited number of elements and they're in different combinations and pairs uh, all across all these different tiles. And this, remember, this will be randomized each time. So you decide who's going to go first, and uh, whoever's going f on the very first turn of the game has to place their first token on one of the edges of the board. You cannot do it in the middle four tiles. So let's just say I'm going to go here, and this has the, uh, the poem flag and the flower on it. You're going to take that tile that you just replaced with one of your tokens and put it off to the side, clearly visible to both players. Now, what you're trying to do here, the victory condition of this game, is you're trying to place uh, your your tokens out in a way that it, uh, it either you're going to have them in a straight line, so this would be victory, and also diagonally or vertically would be the same thing, so long as it's in a straight line, or you're going to make a two by two grid of them, like so. If you can. Uh, the other way is if you block out your opponent from being able to make a legal move. If you can do any of those things, you're going to win the game. Now, what do I mean by a legal move, and how do the rest of the turn? How are the rest of the turns going to go? Well, after the first player places on one of the edges of the board, uh, the second player is going to have to place their token. Uh, and replace a tile that shares one of the elements in common with the tile that was just taken off of the board. In this case, either a flower or a poem flag. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and put it here because that has a poem flag on it, but it also has a cherry blossom tree. Now, back to the red player. The red player has to put it somewhere where there's a poem flag or a cherry blossom tree. So let's see, I want to go for a straight line. So I'm going to go here and replace that. So now it's sun and cherry blossom tree. So now the black player has to decide, okay, I can keep going for my own thing because I can put it up here, but maybe I want to block out that other player. Or maybe I'll go for a two by two grid, or which would also maybe set me up for a straight line. So I'm going to do it where the sun is and right. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to put that token there. And then of course you may want to block move to intercept your opponent. So this is flower and sun. So maybe as the red player, since I don't have a great move down here, I'll start working up this way, or maybe I'll even just go ahead and do this to really try and uh, get into my opponent's territory. You're going to do this constant back and forth, looking at what the last tile that was taken out was, trying to put yourself into one of those three different victory conditions, although it's, uh, you're usually just trying to outlast your opponent if you're going for the third one to keep them from making a legal move. It's usually going to be by going in a straight line or by having your two by two grid. That is Nia. It's as simple as that. Let's get to my final thoughts. As you can see, Nia is a very pretty game. It's, I, I, you know, I don't typically like tins uh, because some of them are just very clunky and large, but this one is small enough that it's not too uh, obtrusive and I think it looks great. I think that the tokens are awesome. I've seen uh, Blue Orange use these in other games like Battle Sheep as well, but they're really solid, high quality um, because if you if you use them with the, the face side up, you never have to worry about uh, any of the, the painted images 
wandering off or, or wearing off or anything like that. Uh, the tiles look good as well. It can be kind of tough your first game just to figure out what images are on what. They start to blend together the more that you stare at the board, but it's actually the, the graphic design is done pretty well as, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, the game is very easy to learn. It's very easy and it's very fast, but I found it to be very crunchy. There is a surprising amount of depth to such a simple and fast game. This is like what I would have wanted a game like chess to be, to be more interesting, to look good and get me more engaged. And after I played this the first time and lost horribly because I'm terrible at these types of games, I was like, well, we gotta play again. And we gotta play again. And then my next game group, I'm this immediately the first thing I brought out when the first person got here. This is like the perfect type of game when you just have two players, you're waiting for more people to show up and you wanna knock out a quick game. And I should mention though, that even though the game is very quick, it probably does go on a few minutes longer than it should because there is a lot of AP analysis paralysis that could happen in this game because you are trying to think several moves ahead of your opponent and they're trying to do the same thing to you and they have to react to where you place your token out onto the board. You have to think, okay, I put this here, you know, in the beginning of the game, you just go out on the edges of the board, but from then on, it's just purely looking at what that last tile that was picked up was and then where it limits your options to place. It's like, okay, put this here, but then by doing that, he has these two options of where to place on, or multiple different options on the board based on those two characteristics of the tile. And it's like, well, he can go here or here, and then she can go here. And it's like, well, but if, but if I go here, that limits her options even more. And there's just this constant back and forth of trying to figure out what your opponent is most likely to do that is just great. I really enjoyed it. It doesn't overstay its welcome. If this was a bigger, more grandiose game, I, I mean, I have complained in other reviews about games that don't have a, uh, any luck involved, but in this case, I think that it's, like I said, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's fast. It's fun. You really have to try and outthink your opponent, and it can be a little bit stressful, but just the right kind of stressful in the right kind of time frame, and it looks great themeless though it might be. So if you want something quick to play with two players, something uh, that's you know very affordable and that is just going to be a great filler, you definitely want to take a look at this one. That is Nia from Blue Orange Games. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.